Hey there, all you cool, epic, awesome fans, followers, and listeners. Welcome to episode 41 of the Cool Epic Awesome Podcast. My name is Matt, and I'll be your co-host today. And I'm your other co-host, Joe. And today's episode, I'm pretty excited for. We have three films to talk about. Um, two that came out. Uh, these are like the first two kind of big 2024 releases. Yeah. Uh, which is the Mean Girls musical and the Beekeeper, which is David Ayer's action original action film starring Jason Statham. And then w- Joe last episode recommended us to talk about Dune, which I had seen previously and on rewatch I I loved it again. So I'm I'm anticipating hearing your thoughts on yeah. it, Joe. Um, and then yeah, besides that, we also are announcing our winners for our um our awards that we did we we did our own sort of award show kind of thing like similar to the oscars except our awards mean a or lot more space, yeah and uh yeah we gave our nominees last episode so we'll be announcing our winners for that it's some pretty good picks i feel like mm-hmm. for sure and it's going to be different i feel like it's different than what the academy is going to choose for most yeah of them. No. but all right, yeah, the so... Real, the real man's award. Yeah. <laughs> we should make physical awards and, like, send yeah, them to... Send uh, them in, get their addresses the and send them in the mail. They would really... Pro- they would care. They would honestly care. Yeah. But, anyways, yeah, we could start with uh, the Mean Girls musical, which I, I, feel, I don't... I feel like you have a better... You could probably give a better synopsis since you've seen the original, too. Yeah, so I actually watched the original Mean Girls a few weeks ago for the first time with my girlfriend. Um, and the story for the musical is basically the same, but I had that understanding of like knowing what the original was going into this, so I think that definitely helped. Um, but the story basically follows a girl named Katie who she lived in Australia, I think it was, and then, yeah. or, or no, Africa. It was Africa, Africa, sorry. And then she moves into Ohio, maybe? I f- I forget where somewhere in the U S in the Midwest, um, and she goes to a high school and it's her sort of interacting with you know high school life in America and she ends up joining this group of popular girls called the Plastics and then it basically follows her journey through there. Um, and I I actually really liked the original. I ended up giving it like an eight out of ten. I thought it was pretty great. It was funny. It was yeah, iconic. I didn't know you rated it that high. Yeah, like the lines that that were said you know like wednesdays we wear pink and like you're never gonna make fetch happen like i've heard people talk about those lines like as i was growing up and stuff like girls that i knew and it was just like iconic for the time that it came out uh but i honestly i did not really like this musical i think that each cast member of all of the plastics like all the cast members are a significant downgrade from their previous counterparts. That could just be me, like preferring that classic. Uh, honestly, like not not that I'm a big fan of the movie, but I thought the plastics were kind of the the highlight of the movie. I mean, they weren't bad, but if you, I I saw on TikTok someone was doing like a um a scene comparison between the original Mean Girls and this one, and yeah. the it's Rachel McAdams is like so much better as Regina George than Renee Rapp is. Mm-hmm. And not, I, I don't, she I don't know much. else Renee Rapp? I think she's a singer and she played Regina in the Broadway. Yeah, show. like because our sister's a big Broadway. Like she, She's really into Broadway and she knew who she was like before the movie came out. Yeah, I wasn't familiar with her. Yeah, but, neither, neither and, You know, she's a fine actress, but she's she's no Rachel McAdams. Like, no, I don't know. I, mean, they, I thought she was. I thought honestly, I enjoyed her part the most out of the movie. Yeah, she. I still thought she was good, but like again, when I just knowing that I just watched that first one. Yeah, that's fair. I still haven't then, seen the first one, so I think you would like it a lot better. Then going from that to this, I was kind of like, okay. Yeah. Um. And yeah, honestly, the the musical aspects. Did they like bother you really? Or no, I just feel like. I don't know. I just the it wasn't really the musical aspects. I just feel like the pacing was just so like 
I don't know. Off and the editing as well. I mean, you point. I mean, yeah, you, mean, you point that out too. Yeah, um, I, I'm a fan of musicals. I don't mind a good musical, but for some reason, this one just I don't think it worked. Um, like yeah. you mentioned with the pacing and the editing, this is adapting a Broadway stage play, which is what three hours long, mm-hmm. and it's condensing it to like under two hours. So you're going to have problems with pacing. You're going to have issues because you break into songs that last five minutes. And it's like in that five minutes, the story doesn't progress at all. You're kind of like stuck doing the song. So you can't like organically move the story along. It felt very rushed. Um, And the the editing, especially towards the beginning, I just thought was awful. Yeah. Like the film, to me, it felt very amateur. Like it seemed like, the people who were doing it have never made a movie before. Yeah. Which, I mean, th- this is the directorial debut. for It's it's like dually directed. There's two directors. I'll, I'll, uh, hold on. Let me I mean, I guess, like, you can kind of give them a pass for the first. I don't know. But you'd expect something bigger from a pretty, like, it's a major production. It's not like, you know, now. It's Paramount, yeah. right? It's like a... Yeah, yeah. I think, let me see. Hold on. It It felt cheap. To me as well, but it, I think it was cheap. Yeah, probably I'm pretty sure it cost like thirty million to make, which yeah. in today's day and age is pretty cheap. But yeah, there was certain like editing choices. One thing that really bothers me is when films like just change the aspect ratio constantly. And I noticed yeah, this would, doing that. It kept going into like wide shots, wide randomly. shots, and then it would be like normal shot, and then, like I don't know. I I was doing some research and I read online that that was on purpose because they wanted to make the songs feel like they wanted to make the songs look like music videos, so they would turn it into like a wide shot. Yeah, but change, they transition change. it then. Don't like they just go from one shot to the next. Like there was no, you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I just there's ways I, around it. I feel like I still like whether or not it was on purpose or or not. I still think it looked ugly. Like I didn't. Yeah, no. Regardless, it did look ugly. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, that that part, that aspect of it definitely bothered me a lot, and probably more than it usually yeah. would. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah. The the whole thing just felt very sloppy. It felt amateur. Another thing that I noticed was like. For example, let's let's contrast this with another musical that came out recently, Wonka. Wonka. Yeah. Um, I think the songs in that are way can, more memorable. They can first opinion. of all, they're more memorable, and second of all, I feel like they could stand on their own as just songs. Yeah. A lot of the songs in this movie felt like you can't just like listen to them; they can't stand on their own. They were like actors having dialogue between each other, but just put yeah. in song form. It was like part of the story yeah. and song. To be fair, in this in, in Mean Girls Defense, it is adapting a Broadway play. So I mean mm-hmm. I get yeah. why, you know. Yeah, I get I yeah, I agree. I get why. But, but then if you're gonna do that, do what they're doing with like Wicked is gonna be two parts. Because that's like a four hour play on Broadway. Yeah. They could have put it into two parts, I guess. But I mean, yeah, even even, like even aside aside from the musical aspect, I found the original Mean Girls very funny, but this one I feel like a lot of the jokes were reused, which I get for like the nostalgia sake, but a lot of the bits just like didn't hit as hard. I mean, some of, I, like I don't know, some of the jokes were funny to me, but it was definitely wasn't like I don't know. For, like, uh, yeah, well, like for for example, like. Just let's just say the first Mean Girls. There's this ongoing joke about how um, Katie ends up giving like these bars to Regina that are supposed to make her lose weight, but they accidentally make her gain weight. Mm-hmm. It, it's funny because it's ironic because in the original, it's like Rachel McAdams is playing like this paper thin girl, and she's like, "Oh, I'm so fat, I need to lose weight." Yeah. And like, I'm not not to obvious. I'm not trying to like body shame or anything. Like Renee Rapp is, she's like a gorgeous girl. She's there's nothing wrong with her body at all, but she's not like super thin. That's what makes it funny. It's supposed to be ironic. Yeah. So like the the whole thing of her being like, oh, I have to lose weight, and like she gives her these bars. It just like didn't work as well. I don't think. 
Um, I mean, that's yeah. like a big ongoing joke throughout the movie. Like you lose the irony. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I I actually I want to talk about um two of the other side characters that I actually liked a lot. The girl Janice, um, the actress who plays her actually voiced Moana. I don't know if you knew. Oh that. yes, yes, I know the girl you're talking about. Her and then the dude who plays Damien. I thought both of them were pretty good. They were probably yeah. my my favorite parts of the movie, to be honest. Yeah. My favorite character, I think, was Janice. I don't which know one? I'm sorry. Which that. one is? Janice is the uh, the girl who voiced Moana. Honestly, I like Regina the best. Really? I yeah. mean, she. I feel like she was kind of the main yeah. girl. You know. Um, another thing that I also noticed was the girl who plays um, Karen. Karen Shetty. The, she's like the one who's who's supposed to be dumb. She's like ditzy. Yeah, she was funny. She was. I think she was overacting a ton. She was like pushing it too much. Every scene, her mouth is like wide open. She's staring into space. But when I feel like you, uh, that was like kind of the point of the character. She was I know, but to... it, the, if you compare it to the original, um, that role oh, is man. played by Amanda Seyfried, and her she has plays the same character where she's you know ditzy. She's supposed to be a little dumb, but her performance was like a bit more nuanced. It wasn't just like, oh, look at her. Like, she's staring at the sky with her mouth open and stuff. Yeah. It was just, I don't know. I think the the girl in this one was overacting a bit. And it kind of was distracting. Yeah. To be fair. Um, I'm not familiar with that actress, though. She seems like she's pretty new. Yeah. Avantika, her name is. They're all, like, relatively... They knew, yeah. None besides, of these people have been besides, anything Besides uh, Angry Rice. Or, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she plays... Uh, Katie. Yeah, she's, she's in she's in Spider Man, right? Yeah, yeah. She's in a couple other things. She's in Nice Guys. Mm-hmm. I've seen that movie Honor Society that she's in. It looks so ass. Yeah, it was pretty ass. But um, she's in a Daisy Quack, world's scariest animal. That's fire. Um, but. Yeah, let me see. What else do I got to say about this? I also... I don't know if I like the dude who played Aaron Samuels. Who's the love interest? Yeah. I don't think he was as good as the original guy. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, for me, like, I thought he was fine. But it's also, like, I have nothing... I have no merit to go off of, you know? Yeah. Um, But, yeah, like you were saying with the... The fact that it's a musical and it's like rushed so much, there were certain aspects that are just completely left out. Like, for example, in the first film, um, Katie's father is like, he's a character. He's in the yeah. picture. And like, for some reason, he's just completely removed from this. Uh, it's I don't really. Weird, actually. It's just like weird. I don't know why. And I'm pretty sure I was looking it up. He's in the Broadway show, too. For some reason, they took him out of the movie. I guess they thought like his role was so. Like it was one of the roles that had. To be. I mean, like honestly, it's weird because it didn't have to be ninety minutes. They could have made it like two hours, like mm-hmm. an hour forty. Like you know, they could have extended it, and made it a, it a little more. I don't know. Like, I guess pay like fix the pacing issues a little bit. Yeah, but I think Tina Fey was good. I know she was. She's a she producer on this or something. She's like supposed to be the mastermind behind this movie. Well, she wrote the play, too, I believe. Really? And she wrote this. She wrote the screenplay for this, too. Yeah, I'm looking at it now. I didn't know. I liked her character in this as well. She plays the same yeah, character in was... the original. Oh, and oh, she's in the original? I didn't know yeah, that. she plays the same character. The principal's in the original, too, right? Um, yeah. But, like, it was always kind of implied in the original that, like, he has... He, like, had a crush on her. And in this one, it's, like... Confirmed. Her, they're actually together, so that was, uh, was kind of... I like how they did yeah, that. Yeah, that was, felt... It, while I was in the theater, like, when it was revealed that they were, like, together, like, I kind of, like... It felt like a fan service moment, but, like, I just... I don't know. I, I was like, all right, like, whatever. Yeah. I, I guess for people that are fans of it. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Um. Yeah, I don't know if you knew this. This is kind of random, but... uh, Like, I was talking about Karen Shetty... Mm-hmm. The uh, the ditzy girl, Amon Vellani actually auditioned for that, but she didn't get it. Really? Yeah. 
And I just thought that was interesting. Yeah. I don't think she would have fit that role, though, to be honest. Yeah, no. Because she's, like, play, like, I don't know. I always see her as, like, and she's, like, a super smart, like, nerd. And, Mm -hmm. you know, it would be weird. That would be a complete contrast to Miss Marvel. Yeah. Um, Yeah, let's talk talk about my favorite scene, though. I really liked the, the mathletes competition scene. I liked how that was, that scene in particular was edited, how it was, like, cutting from the prom back to like the mathletes contest and you know you have your fan service moment where Lindsay lohan comes back and she plays katie in the original film you see she got 500k to come back i mean she's in it for like 35 seconds it was worth it though i was i I mean i'm just saying that's crazy yeah um how much was the budget again 30 would you say 30 i'm pretty sure i saw it was 31 million they probably didn't have to pay the actors that much, and no, I doubt you had enough. Physical. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Did you have like? Did I don't know if you said who your favorite character was, but Regina. Oh yeah, yeah. And what about? Did you have a particular scene that stood out to you or no? I mean, I, I guess her like I like her introduction scene was kind of cool, but I don't know. There was nothing really. The dance numbers were kind of cool, but there was no like singular shot that really stood out to me. I don't know if that's just like. The personal thing, or I don't know, but I guess if I had to pick one, excuse me, um, Regina George is like intro. I kind of liked, but yeah, it's mem. That scene is pretty memorable yeah. when like the lights go off and stuff. Yeah, that was, that was a pretty good. That was decent. But the, yeah, yeah, like the aspect ratio changing like ruined that scene for me. Yeah, and then like I was also thinking about this too. Like she's introduced to Regina, and then like within thirty, <laughs> not even like. 20 minutes of being introduced with her, so like she's already in the plastics, like they're going to her house already, like you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, in the original, it does it that, happens that, like, fast that relationship, it's a little bit more fleshed out. Yeah, it is like it's still relatively quick, but it's a little bit more fleshed out. This one is kind of like snap your fingers in there yeah. already, you know, but yeah, um, and again, like I feel like. I'm not. I want people to enjoy this. Like this movie is not for us. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> like it's clearly no, made. I, but like, our problems with the movie aren't about like the actual like whether it has to do with Mean Girls or not. Like the movie has issues. Yeah, no, for sure. But I just I don't. I feel weird being like two dudes just shitting on the Mean Girls musical movie. Yeah, know? I mean, like, listen, um, we're not shitting on it because it's a, it's like a Mean Girls musical. Which, like, all the stuff we're saying that's wrong with it is valid. It has nothing yeah. to do with, like, the cast was fu- like good. I didn't have any issues with the actors or actresses. Yeah. And, oh, and like, the story itself is still good. Like, I like what ends up happening yeah. with Katie no, yeah. as a character, how, you know, she the ending thinks is that nice. she wants like to ending. be on the yeah oh yeah I, I like the ending as well where like the garage pulls down just that last shot was pretty cool I like yeah. how they did that um it's like a fourth wall break and they look at the audience which is it makes sense because it's supposed to be like a, a musical kind of yeah um, I, I like I, uh how they make Regina's character like she's like drugged up at the end <laughs> yeah. that was is that is she like that in the original too or no uh, I forget if she's drugged up, but she's in the she's in the neck brace because like her getting hit by a bus also yeah. happens in the original. That scene was pretty funny. I didn't um, expect that at all. I thought that was yeah. Kind of I just I expected it just because I knew it happened yeah. in the original. But yeah, it is. It's shot like the same way in the original movie, where it's just out of nowhere, like she gets hit by a bus. It's pretty funny yeah. though. Um, yeah, I like I like how they poked fun at the audience a, a few times. Like they made fourth wall breaks. Um. For example, like that scene where they're in the gym and they're all saying, I forget, are they saying like something that they were mad at someone else for that they forgive them for or something? Do you know what I'm talking about? Where they're all going and saying mm-hmm. something. Honestly, I don't remember. What and then they, they do that. Uh, they were in the gym and then like they each did the trust fall after. What were they mad about though? Oh, the the burn book, the, like that the burn yeah. book came out. Okay. It was like, oh, each person say something oh apologize for something yeah. i'm sorry for this i'm sorry for that there was like the mm-hmm. random girl that was on like not even go, was to go to the school or something like that yeah no but i was gonna say one of the girls was like i'm sorry for yelling at you for dragging during that musical number so she was like it was making a joke that the characters like knew that they just randomly broke into 
song and, and uh, dance. Uh, I yeah, I thought that... the, the, the script was, like, clever. Like, it, I don't know. That's yeah. the best word I could use to describe it. Yeah. Like, I don't hate the movie. There are things that I, there are things that I liked about it. But yeah, but it's I definitely just, has... I, it just wasn't for me, you know? Yeah. But if you want to get to ratings, um, I gave yeah, it, so... two, I gave it a two and a half star, five out of 10. Um, it, the more I was talking about, it, I feel like maybe I, I should give it a little bit lower, <laughs> but I, I enjoyed it for what it was. There were just certain things like recurring things that were bothering me throughout that, Kind of ruined the movie for me. I don't. I think that the third act was definitely the best. And if that, if it didn't yeah, turn itself around, a lot. yeah, I would have liked it a lot less. So, yeah. And then I gave it a two out of five, four out of ten. Um, I just, I don't know. I there's a lot I don't like with this movie, and I mean, the I, I don't even enjoy the the even the music isn't super memorable to me. Like, I remember way more songs from Wonka than I do from this. Yeah, I was going to say, like, the music is not... The only song that has been, like, at least a little bit stuck in my head was the Regina George song. Not even that. The only one was the the math one. I don't even remember that like one Like, the all. stupid with... It's, like, stupid with love. Oh. Uh, when she first yeah. meets that dude. Yeah. That was the uh, only one that really, like, stuck out to me than every other one. Yeah, the only one I I could really remember is the My Name is Regina George one, and I think the only reason why I remember that is because she sang it twice. Twice, yeah. But, Damn. yeah, I mean, you could, I, f- I feel like everyone involved had a good time, and it's 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 inoffensive, it's just like a harmless yeah, musical, no. you know, so. Definitely felt like it belonged straight to streaming, though. Yeah, it originally was planned. A word? Yeah, for Paramount+. Plus. But it got changed to theatrical, and I think uh, that that was uh, a good decision by them. I'm pretty sure it already made okay. that. that honestly, honestly, that sense. makes a little more sense. Yeah. Why this so like less? Like you, I don't know. I feel like it's not made with. Yeah, it's not like theatrical, really. Yeah. Not I feel like you could watch it on your, on your like 30 inch TV in your house and not lose anything. Yeah. So. All right. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's really it. Um move on though we could move on to our second movie which we saw in theaters which was the beekeeper uh, i mentioned earlier it was directed by david ayer who you guys probably know from directing suicide squad from 2016 which is probably one of the worst movies ever made in the in the uh public then, yeah i mean to be fair it wasn't really his like vision of the movie mhm but Anyway, yeah, um, but, but yeah, it's basically to go through the plot. It's very, it's similar to John Wick, which for those of you who don't know, like the John Wick movies is it's a retired assassin who his dog gets killed. <laughs> so he comes out of retirement to like get revenge. This is like, he's this retired, like beekeeper, secret service kind of guy where there's this, there's this society of it's cool. yeah, it's super like... elite soldiers called beekeepers that he's retired and he's like literally tending to bees and then this woman that he takes care of it's it's a little bit more complicated actually now that i'm saying it out loud yeah so, so this, this like, you could go because like yeah. so ba- I'll, like i'll just explain the plot like as it goes like through mm-hmm. the progression of the so it starts off you meet this guy he's a beekeeper like legit beekeeper and he just you know and he he I don't, he he's help he rents like space from this woman, but it, like he's friendly with her. And then one day, like the woman ends up like getting scammed and losing all her money, and like because of this, she ends up killing herself because she's like so like you know she thinks she's broke. And then like he was supposed to have dinner at her house that night, and he goes there, and like he sees his daughter there, her daughter there. And then, like, her daughter is like, what are you doing here? And then, like, he just kind of just explains, like, that he's going to go after these people. And that's basically, like, the course of the movie is you're following him, like, going after this, these people scamming old, old or people's money, basically. And he just yeah. literally just, he just John Wicks his way through the entire company, essentially. Yeah, and I really liked the movie. I was surprised because yeah. I had no expectations pretty much going in. 
I like I'm a fan of Jason Statham. I think he's good for what he does. He's just that great man action hero. Um not the not the greatest actor, but I love how he delivers his corny lines in this movie, especially all the ones that have to do with yeah. bees. Where he's like, we gotta hive. Pro- yeah, we gotta protect the hive. the hive. Yeah. And there was so many like funny lines that made me chuckle just of him like being completely serious yeah. and and being like Oh, this is what you get when you kick the hornet's nest. Like so many B puns. Yeah, just so many B puns. But yeah, I was saying it's similar to John Wick because it's like a retired guy comes out to get revenge. And I also think that was it was really smart the way that they set up the story with um, him going after these people that run call centers to scam the elderly because yeah. that instantly makes him such a lovable character because everyone yeah. hates, hates those people. People, yeah. Like it's and such then- an. It's the such villains, an easy target, you know. The villains are like so over the top, like mustache twirlingly evil. Like they're that is like hype that they're stealing from old people and shit. Like it's like in that that first in the first scene, excuse me, that you're introduced to the. He's not the, the main person in the company, but he's like a I guess one like a. He's like one of the leaders of one of the call centers. Yeah. And he's like dead ass, like scam. I don't know, like, yeah, like it's something out of the Wolf of Wall Street. He's yeah, like, yeah. He's teaching his people how he's like, oh, I got this lady on the line. Here's how you reel her in, and he's showing all these people how to scam this woman. He's like, oh, you got to give me your password to your bank account, whatever. And the lady doesn't know any better, so. But just it was so absurd the way that they yeah handled mm-hmm. that situation. And I I like how the film embraced how stupid it was. It didn't try. Oh to be yeah, serious. no, it knows it knows what type of movie it is. It doesn't shy away from that. Yeah, and I thought like like for example, there's one part where the beekeeper gets surrounded by like six U.S. Army like SWAT officers, and he just destroys all of them and like without even having a gun. He has like a pistol, maybe. What does he say to them? He walks up to them first, and he, what does he he says something like mad? He's like, oh, like uh. I'm looking for like this person. Are they in this building? And the and the guy's just like, "Who the fuck are you?" And then he yeah. says some beat pun and it just like beats the shit out of six yeah, like arms swap man. <laughs> it clearly makes no sense. Yeah. But I just love how they're making him sort of this untouchable, insane action hero. Uh, yeah, there was he, a couple great fight scenes throughout. There's the one in the in the barn when they come after him, where he yeah. like picks off all the guys one by mm-hmm. one. The uh, fight with that, uh, that like bounty hunter dude who who killed a he killed a bee and he lost his leg a beekeeper he lost his leg. Yeah, that yeah, fight, I was gonna, that was my favorite part of the scene. I mean, that was yeah. my favorite scene. No, I was gonna say me as well. That that last scene at the end, that last fight scene is insane. Yeah, it's it's really well shot and it's also just like really cool, like really yeah. cool is a fight choreography. The other thing um, I don't like about Jason Statham is that. He has like I don't know if you know, but every movie that he works in, he has like a, a thing in his contract where like he can't lose a fight scene. Really? Yeah. So like it kind of takes away from like this guy every time I see him in a movie because like I know he's not gonna die or like you know. Yeah. That's that's why I was kind of surprised that like he got stabbed in those fight scenes because like usually he just like even in the Fast Fast and Furious movies like he usually just like marks everybody. Yeah. Hobbs and Shaw. Yeah, oh yeah. If you if you I watch like, Hobbs and like Shaw, you notice, like he either like is in a draw in a fight or like wins. Or wins. Yeah, it's funny because I bet you The Rock has that same clause in his. Oh, contract. see, yeah, no, he's the same thing. Yeah, he's another one. Like, so neither of them can. can yeah, it, like I th- in their fight, like I'm pretty sure in their fight scene, like they it's a draw, like that nobody wins. They p- both punch each other in the face at the same time, or something mm-hmm. stupid like that. Probably honestly, but I, I, like because they both can't in their contract, they can't lose a fight scene, which is just yeah. like so ridiculous. And it's like yeah. you, you no, see I, that, and then movies like John Wick, where like I know we're getting a whole little topic, but like John Wick gets like basically beat the shit out of in all all of his movies. Yeah, loses fingers and like yeah, like uh, that makes the character so much better in my opinion. Yeah, no, I didn't know that, but. You're right, that does take away from some of the weight when you know like he literally can't lose. 
Yeah. I'm surprised oh. you didn't know about the Rock because you're a big, you're a big Rock hater. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I feel like I might have heard that. It kind of sounds like something I, I might have heard in the past, but yeah. I don't really remember. But either way, that's just so ridiculous. Yeah. Then, yeah. But yeah, like I was saying about the film embracing the absurdity. Like at the end, it literally gets to a point in the story where it's like oh, yeah. Adam Adam Clay, who's like the guy, who's the beekeeper. Like he's gonna kill the president. Like it's it's just like so insane. It doesn't yeah. make, like it's like the most ridiculous thing you could think of. Uh, it turns out that oh, there's another character that's he's the main villain actually. He's played by Josh Hutcherson. If you want to talk about him, I think I thought uh, he did a pretty great job portraying that character. Yeah, he uh, like I don't know he he played the character exactly how he's supposed to be played. Yeah, he's supposed to be like someone maybe close to our age, a yeah. little older. He's obsessed with uh. He basically grew in, like, was born into money because of, well, I don't I guess his mom, or, or no, the father, right? Oh, father did, father. like, something, I don't know what they did. But yeah, he used his money to, like, open up these illegal call centers what, that scam the elderly, and then they used that money to fund his mom's presidential campaign, who she, she is the president in this movie. Yeah, um, it's I, just great. It's, I, I mean, you know... <laughs> He's just like, he's such like a little shit. Like he's yeah. so easy to hate his character. I like his line when when he was talking to um that lady at the uh, at the end at the party, and he's like trying to chat her up, and he's talking about, oh yeah, you got to look into like these NFTs. They're really on the rise. It's like something so stupid yeah. like that. Like those are the type of people that just get made fun of yeah. by me. Um. But yeah, I think he did well. I've I've never yeah. seen him play a villain. Um, he I said he's... He, after this, he kind of wants to play more villains. Yeah, it was cool, and I like what they did with his character. He gets shot in the head at the end. Yeah. Uh, that was a very satisfying scene. I f- I feel like they're gonna do a beekeeper. It's like they're gonna do a second one or. Yeah, that's what I was gonna ask you about. You think? I I would like to as see it does the well. character. Yeah, I, I would like to see another like you know. You know who I also like the two detectives as well. Yeah, I, I enjoyed. Um, I don't know I who that girl f- was. Yeah, I'm gonna. Her name is Emmy Raver Lampman. <laughs> I'm definitely mispronouncing that. But uh, let's see. She began her career working in musical theater, performed in various Broadway and national touring productions. She's Such as PC. Jekyll and Hyde, Wicked, and Hamilton. Oh, she's from the Umbrella Academy as well, apparently. Okay. She, she was pretty great. I liked her. I haven't really seen her anything else. I also liked the dude. Bobby Nadiri is the actor's name. I'm also not familiar with him. She's in Argo. She is? Yeah. Uh, I don't think she is, dude. No, he is. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I've never seen Argo, but yeah, I like both of those characters. Um, I don't yeah, know. I just no. feel like it was a stupid, fun action movie. Yeah, it knew, it exactly. it knew exactly what it was, yeah. and it was entertaining all throughout. Yeah. It never tried to take itself too serious. Yeah, it was. There was I funny it was dialogue like and too much. A little bit of a riff on John Wick. Like with the the hive and like the the people with the call center and stuff. Yeah, like, it's right, definitely like, it's definitely derivative. Yeah, of that. I still enjoyed it for what it was. I'm not, you know. Yeah, I think maybe it was a little bit lighter overall. Like there was a bit, there was a bit more levity to his character in the film overall than I would say John Wick. But I, yeah. I definitely I know there's it there's inspiration for sure. Like this was definitely inspired by by John Wick, um, but yeah, apparently it's doing decent enough at the box office that there could be a sequel happening. That's good news. Do I, like I even David have? Ayer. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about David Ayer based on his tweets where he's like bitching about the Suicide Squad online. I don't really like him that much, but I also don't know too much about him personally, so I don't know. Yeah, sure. you like him though? You said. Yeah, I like him. All right. I feel like he got um, fucked. He got fucked. I mean, yeah, seems, seems like, like it. 
Yeah. I mean, but I at like some that. point, it's just like give it yeah, up. Yeah. You know, yeah. like how I mean, many I, years? I, I don't. I, I don't. He's not to the level like. Uh, Jake, not Jason. We'll Snyder. Is. Snyder is, but. Yeah. But dude, yeah. it's been eight years yeah. since Suicide Squad came out. You know. Nah, but he's. I don't know. He's not like. It's different though. Like if I think it's more like if he sees somebody like posting about it, he'll be like, "Oh yeah, like you know." But then yeah, like, but he could just not say anything. Like Zack yeah. Snyder doesn't say anything. It's it's more of Zack Snyder's fans I mean, that I don't like. No, but Zack Snyder also like hosts events and shit. Yeah, I, I mean, I guess yeah. It's not like he's also like Suicide Squad watch parties and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a good point. All right, well. Do I even have to say my favorite character here? Yeah, I mean, it's pretty it's, obvious. It's Adam Clay, the yeah, beekeeper. The beekeeper. Yeah, I, I really hope they make a sequel. I, I like his character. I think yeah. if they do maybe a couple more movies, he's got potential to be, like, you know, he has a sick name, like, the beekeeper. The That's beekeeper. a pretty cool yeah. no, name. Pretty, like, yeah. He could be, like, a pretty iconic action yeah. hero, you know? So. I think they're definitely going to do something with, like, they're gonna be say like people are like the hornets or some shit. And they're gonna be like an evil. Like, yeah, it's like so stupid and obvious that it's exactly what they would do. Yeah, yeah, like it's like too... perfect for the world. You know? Yeah. But all right, um, but, yeah. Uh, so anyway, we can move on now. We're going to ratings. Oh yeah, our ratings. I forgot. Uh, you could go first. So I gave it a, a three out of five, so six out of ten. I really enjoyed the action, but it's like a little too the plot's like a little too ridiculous for me. Like I still enjoy it. I like it for what it is, but like I don't know. For me, like it's the villains are a little too mustache twirly, like evil. Yeah, I get but, that. Yeah, I gave it a three and a half star, a seven out of ten. I think it's perfect for what it is. Um, but what it is is not necessarily a great movie, you know. So I enjoyed the the yeah. action. It's I enjoyed Jason Statham. Yeah, I enjoyed Sa- Jason Statham's performance. The direction was okay, but it's really just the action. That's the that's yeah, the the, at, movie. yeah that's really at the core of it. So you, and on it so far, it's my highest rated film of the year. So yeah, me too. Honestly, that will definitely not stick. But and at least was, until, like, some actually good shit starts coming out. The answer I was gonna say, like, in terms of we're about like what almost three weeks into twenty twenty four, and it's been pretty shit. I mean, I've only seen four movies that have released this year, but so far nothing's broke three stars. Yeah, let me see what I've got. I've seen eight films this year so far. My highest is a three and a half. Then I have one three star, and then everything else is two and a half and below. So, and Beekeepers three, Good Grief was three, ISS was two and a half, and then Mean Girls is two. Oh yeah, yeah we both also saw ISS this uh, this weekend. Um, yeah, it was pretty bad. It I mean, was. Yeah, even... it was. I thought it was okay. You like you disliked it more than I did. I thought. Yeah, it has a great premise, but poorly executed. Um, yeah, I mean, we could, I guess, talk about it for a little bit. I guess, why not? Yeah, I mean, yeah, well. so the, yeah the premise of it was um, there is it, the International Space Station, which I think exists in real life. That is, it, it definitely does, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a jointly operated space station um, by the U.S. and Russia that was made in an effort to advance space travel and technology and whatnot they do research up there so it's basically the plot is this girl she's from the u.s it's her first time going to the space station she's an astronaut she goes up there there's americans and russians working together and then a world war breaks out on earth while they're up there between the u.s and russia and each um each side is just like yo take over the station by any means possible um but yeah, and I thought it was pretty bad. It's kinda it's a it's a game it's kinda like a who do you trust that type of Yeah, Among Us kind of thing. Deadass, yeah, Deadass Among Us. Um I, f- 
I felt like it could have been very tense, and that premise sounds sick. Like that, I feel like that would work really well as like a mini series. Yeah, like, in a ninety minute. Because like film. I feel like it's hard for you to like uh, really grow attached to these characters and like show relationship. Like for example, um, the character played by uh, I can't remember the hell's name. I'm sorry. Uh, the mustache guy. Yeah. Chris Messina. Yeah. Like, did you even know that he had a relationship with that what that Russian I mean woman? there were like, some had... there were like some implications towards the beginning I where really... they would they would have like lingering eye contact for a second, but it wasn't anything like major until all of a sudden they just make out and once Yeah, scene. like I feel like it's just hard for like the audience to really grow like attached to these characters or like for us to like have, see the relationships with because that's what make would make the scenes tense is because they're all supposed to be friends, but it's hard for us to really buy that they're friends when you only really meet them for like twenty minutes. Yeah, um, and also there's this Russian lady who's been on the ship for for a, a minute, and she ends up giving um, or or not giving the the girl who who is played by Ariana Debose that she's like the American. She comes up there. She's there for like a day. And then this Russian lady is like, oh, I can trust you. Like, I'm going to make sure you're the only one that gets sent back on the ship to go back to Earth. And like, she does this test, basically, where she sees if she would tell the truth. But she literally met her that day. Like, and she's willing to send her back to Earth while the rest of them stay up there. Like, it just doesn't make sense. If you could have, if you would have had, like I said, I think it would have worked in a miniseries where you have these characters interact for a bit. Yeah. And then maybe it was a little more... Uh, nuanced in like how they found out about the war on Earth. Maybe like one person saw the bombs go off and like didn't say anything or something like that. But I feel like the way that they did it had to be a little bit rushed because of the runtime of the film. Yeah, like I think the bombs go off like maybe what, twenty minutes in. Twenty minutes in. Yeah, as I'm saying, like how are you really as the audience. Like supposed to care about these characters if like you you're just meeting them, and then twenty minutes in it's like oh like oh how can I trust them? It's like well like, for, as the audience it doesn't really seem like you ever trust them so it's I don't know. Yeah, um, what's it called? Sorry, I just lost my train of thought for a no, second. Good. Yeah, there was one scene in particular that I just want to point out that really bugged me. Yeah, that no, just it just had to do with like this the yeah, I didn't really bother me that much. The realism of the movie. Yeah. There's a scene where this Russian lady is like supposed to be causing a distraction for the American girl, as I mentioned, like she was gonna send her off in the escape pod as the only one to go back to Earth. So she's like causing a distraction, so everyone else is distracted and the American girl can dip off and go to Earth. And while she's doing this, the other American dude doesn't realize that it's just like a show. And he like comes behind her and like hits her with something, but they're in zero gravity, so there's no weight to anything. Like he hits her with like a trash can or something. I mean, it's still a metal like. But there's there's no gravity. There's no like weight to anything. It's like even if he swung mad hard, it said that he said that he cracked her skull with it and like destroyed her brain. Like that makes no sense. It doesn't make any sense, and. I thought the effects, the effects in general, yeah, especially the blood was pretty ass. Yeah. The blood looked fake. Like, and we even noticed there was a scene where, like, uh, these two people are fighting, and one of them gets like drilled, like it's like a power drill, and like sticks it in his stomach. And like in the next scene, like they're just like floating there. And there's just like no blood on his his white shirt. There's like no yeah. blood with blood. Like, just yeah. You know. And even the scenes in space. Where Chris Messina's character is up there, they look like shit. Especially, we just watched a Space Odyssey yeah. that came out in in 1968, and the space scenes look better in that than this. Yeah. Like, there's no excuse. I just don't understand. But yeah, I don't know. This one was it was really easy for me to hate. Yeah. I ended up I gave it a one and a half star. Like, I just Damn, there was I so much. I gave it. I gave it two and a half. I it was bro. It it like hurt me. Like, I I really dis. I, it wasn't like oh I thought it was whatever like I I actively disliked it. Nah, I thought it was like I oh. I I get that I'm nitpicking, but there were certain things that just pissed me off about it. So I get it. I get it. But 
All right. Uh, yeah. I oh, no, before we do that, you want to actually, before we do anything, I just want to remind you, Joe, um, you at the end of this episode, you have to, you're going to have to recommend a list for the next episode okay. because I'm recommending a movie. So I'm just, just start thinking about it now, but yeah. So this week we don't have a list because like I mentioned before, we're going to announce our winners for our, yeah. for our for, cool, um, epic, yeah. awesome awards. awards. First ever. Yep. And we'll post all the winners on Instagram after this too. So, uh, should we start with best picture? Or yeah, we can start with best picture. Get it out of the way. Yeah. All right. Oh, so man, I gotta, I gotta pull up because you sent me all the pictures. Yeah, you you can also look in the doc because you have your things highlighted and whatnot. But yeah, I guess we'll just give a little explanation as to why we chose what we did. Um, yeah, so this might not come as a surprise for anyone, but my best picture was Poor Things, directed by Yorgos Lanthimos. Um, we talked about it on the podcast. It's a five star for me. I think it's the best movie to come out this year by a decently wide margin. I don't think Oppenheimer's like that close to it. Um, but yeah, from every the performances, the direction, the cinematography, set design, costume design. The dialogue, everything is just near perfect. Um, but I don't think that this film is going to get that best picture. I don't even think... I think it's going to end up being a race between Oppenheimer and the Holdovers at the end of the day. At the Oscars, that is. But for me, this yeah. was like far and away the best film of the year. And I'm, ex- I'm glad that a lot of people are getting more exposure to Yorgos. Because as you know, Joe, like... I've been a huge Yorgos fan for years now, and I've been talking yeah. about how he's one of my favorite directors. So even if it doesn't actually win Best Picture at the Oscars, I'm glad that this movie was, you know, as popular as it is, so that more people have exposure to him and he gets more opportunity. So, yeah, I definitely think this is like his biggest in terms of like social buzz, mm-hmm. but like movie that Yorgos has directed. All right, yeah, so you want to give your best picture? Yeah, so I also uh, had four things as well. I mean, Matt pretty much summed it up. There's just so much going for it. I mean, like, the, the story's amazing. The performances are amazing. I mean, honestly, almost every role, I think, deserves a nomination. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, but... I mean, Matt pretty much summed it up. Yeah, I kind of went a little in-depth on it, so... yeah. All right, so our second category. Uh, oh, actually, before you want to like get Yorgos's address so we can send him the award yeah, after this. Cool, epic, awesome film award. His address in Greece. All right, <laughs> moving on. Best lead performance this year by a male. Uh, my pick is unconventional I to the public it. eye, but for me, it probably makes sense, and that's a uh, Joaquin Phoenix and Bo is Afraid. Rated. He's gonna get nominated at the Oscars, um, but I just think he did a phenomenal job in the film. He had a physical performance. Um, he had an emotional performance as well. Just did such a great job of showing how pathetic Bo as a character is, um, and I think it was a very difficult acting job to do. And yeah. that that performance in particular sticks out a lot to me. I think Killian Murphy was definitely up there for me. He'd probably be my number two. But Joaquin's performance just stuck with me a little bit more, I think. It could be because I... Yeah, it could be because I love him so much. And, like, I loved him going into the film. But, yeah, I think Bo is Afraid, as in, in general, is slept on from this year. I think it's one of the better films this year. And if you haven't seen... Uh, his performance in this movie, I would definitely recommend it. So, uh, for my pick, I actually picked uh, Zach Efron from The Iron Claw, and uh, I only saw this movie like recently, like maybe what three weeks ago. So, yeah, it was like I, after I, Christmas, end yeah. of December. But I don't know. I just he he really, like, transformed himself for this role. Like, you can see physically, like, 
he, he just, I don't know. I, I really, really liked his performance. Like, he added a ton of weight, first of all, to, like, to bulk up for the, the you know, the scenes in the movie. And, like, you really, like, you feel the weight of, like, to get into spoilers, but his, you know, I mean, we talked about this movie, so I feel like we can kind of talk about spoilers, but, yeah, yeah. It, you know, you see the emotional weight of his, you know, w- watching his brothers die, basically, in front of him. And you, as the, the course of the movie, you see it, like, break him down. I really loved his performance. His best performance by far, I think, in anything that he's been in. I think you can agree with that, too. Yeah, and I, 100%. The yeah. only thing that I would think even maybe comes close would be, like, The Greatest Showman, which you just watched. I, I haven't just seen watched, it in a while, even, but... He's not even... He's all right. Like, it's a mute. I don't know. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't a biggest fan of The Greatest Showman. Yeah. But um, he, there's like a slim chance he gets nominated, but I doubt nah, it. I, I doubt it. There's a bigger chance, though, I think he does than Joaquin does. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. But, all right. Um, on, anyway, moving on. One, yeah. yeah, best lead performance from a female. This is a pretty safe pick, I would say, but uh, Emma Stone from Poor Things. I think she easily gave the best performance of the year, either male or female. Um, it was such a difficult role to do because she had to be, she had to act as like a child's brain within an adult's body, which again is another like it was a physical performance as well. Like she had to make her character walk and talk as like a child would, just in her adult body. I thought yeah. she was funny and she was very likable and charming in the role. I don't know if she's gonna win this. It's probably gonna at the Oscars. It'll go between her and. Uh, What's her face? Lily Gladstone. I, yeah, Lily Gladstone. Sorry, but hopefully she she gets her flowers. So. Yeah, I mean, I I, I don't know. I think maybe I'm not biased, but I feel like she's the like it's pretty clear she's the winner, like by a pretty large margin. Yeah, I don't I don't think like I really don't think it should even be a competition. No, I agree. I do. I mean, I, I mean, I didn't give my pick, but obviously it's. Uh, Emma Stone and poor things. Um, I mean, Matt, you know, he summed it up again. That's not really much I could say. Yeah. But um, <laughs> again, I, I think in terms of the other performances, if for the female lead, like, I don't think there's anyone close, in my opinion. Yeah. I like, don't, don't disrespect to the lead. Like, she does a really great performance, but I just think, it, I don't know. Matt, yeah. you can attest to it. I think. Yeah, no, I, I don't. I don't really think it should be close, but we'll see. I have a feeling that they're going to give it to Gladstone, and I think, like when we look know. back at this year, it's going to age poor very poorly, because when people I mean, are... a lot of the like I, I saw like the last two like not last two but a couple of the lead performances like you're looking back like the Bohemian Rhapsody guy he got mm-hmm. the best performance like that was a pretty bad pick. Yeah. I mean, I haven't seen the film, to be fair, but basically everyone that... All, judging by the other performances that year yeah, that were nominated, and the fact that he won, um, I pro- I think that year, maybe, I think Bradley Cooper probably should have won for Star is Born. But yeah. I also haven't seen Bohemian Rhapsody. But I think that's like one of the ones in particular that people are like, yeah, that was a pretty bad pick. I think if Gladstone yeah. wins, it might get looked back on the same. So. You could, but all right. Uh, now to move on to supporting performances. So the best supporting performance by a male, my choice was again from Poor Things, Mark Ruffalo. Um, I loved his character. It was different than most of the characters that he usually plays. I thought he was very funny, and he really like transformed himself into that character for the role. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I just think, like to me, his performance stuck out a little bit more than Robert Downey Jr., who would be my second choice. Uh, I think he's probably going to end up winning the Oscar, RDJ. But yeah, for me, I think Ruffalo just stood out a little more. And yeah, I'm also a little bit uh, favoriting. Uh, yeah, it's it's, uh, it's very close. I think. Yeah. So yeah, what, what was your pick for this? I I had um. Robert Downey Jr. from uh, Oppenheimer as Louis Strauss, who he was a lot of U.S. He was some type of U.S. Uh, 
He was like uh, some dude who worked with Op with, in the past, yeah. and he had a personal vendetta against him. Vendetta against him, yeah. He, his, 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 his life goal is to ruin him. Yeah, I mean, speaking of, does, speaking of, uh, we were just talking about Rami Malik for Bohemian Rhapsody. He's the dude yeah. that kind of like exposes him in yeah. Oppenheimer at the end. But, um, but yeah, I thought like, I honestly forgot how good of an actor he is because no, no disrespect to the MCU, but like, I, it's not like Iron Man had like super emotional arcs and it was very, you know. I, I mean, I think he was still, like, no, he, wasn't not... pho- he wasn't phoning it in for Iron Man. I think he's no, still. No, no, I agree. You know, I like he was still good. Like I don't, I have no, I'm like I don't think his performance was bad or anything like that. It's one of the most iconic, like ever, in mm-hmm. my opinion. But I don't know. I just think this is so much of like I don't know. It's also more awards, baby. Like he would never get picked for Iron Man for like. A, yeah. No, and I think like he deserves it. Like it's not that he doesn't. No, and, it, and but I think two is well. Like it's very close. Yeah. He's my number two for his. Yeah, but yeah. All right. Yeah. So for unless you had anything to say, uh, anything else to say about his performance. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So <laughs> best supporting now for the for the female. I chose. This is another um a little bit of an abstract pick, but my choice is actually Penelope Cruz from mm-hmm. Ferrari. I'm not sure if you saw Ferrari Joe, but she I plays uh, his, wife. his wife, and she's dealing with all this shit because he has a affair. It's it's Enzo Ferrari played by Adam Driver. Yeah. He has like an affair with another woman where he basically has a second family, and she kind of has to like deal with all the ramifications of that. She does a great job of showing how like down bad the character is. And her scenes where she has these monologues where she's going off and yelling at him were just so powerful. And she put on such a great performance. And I think it's going to get really overlooked by the Oscars, which is kind of sad. And just overlooked by the general public. I haven't heard anyone talking about her performance, really. Yeah. But I think she was the best supporting actress from this year. But I mean, I haven't seen Ferrari yet. Well, yeah, I'm sure you will, and I think you'll agree that it's a great performance. I don't know if she'll be your pick, but yeah. yeah. So who'd you um, have? I had um, Emily Blunt from Oppenheimer, who plays uh, Oppenheimer's wife. But uh, she, in the story, is kind of his emotional, I feel like punching bag in the story, mm-hmm. in my opinion. And she just, I don't know, she just does such a great job. And she, yeah, she she was great. Yeah, I thought she was great as well. And uh, especially the scenes with her, like finding out about the affair and stuff. And I don't know. I just thought she was fantastic. Her her like raising the kids by herself and like the role that like if affected that character. I thought she portrayed yeah. that really well. And you see her from like when they first meet all the way up until the trial at the end, where yeah. her character decides to defend him, even though. You know, he put her through all this shit. She like knew that he genuinely like was innocent. So, yeah, yeah I agree. I think she did a great job as well. Um, although uh, I think at the Oscars, probably Divine Joy Randolph from the Holdovers is going to end yeah, up winning. Yeah, I wish I haven't seen Holdovers. But... All right, uh, best breakout performance. To me, this was pretty easily Charles Melton from May December. Um, he it was an actor that I didn't know at all, but apparently he's from Riverdale, which is kind of like popcorn serialized TV. That's like stupid, and teenagers watch it. But he put on such a great performance in May December. He did such a great job of showing the innocence of his character, where you can see him in real time starting to realize, like you know, wait, did I get taken advantage of? And even like just the way he acts in the movie. You can tell that he just feels like a kid. Like, he still feels like a boy. Yeah. Uh, I think without his performance, the film would not work as well. So, there's a scene, I mean, like, he's not my pick, but uh, he was in my contention. But um, there's a scene specifically, I remember when he, remember when he smokes, he smokes with his son on the roof. And, like, he's talking about, yeah, yeah. He's just like, like he's he starts getting paranoid and he's just like oh like I just want like what's best for you and it, like he starts getting all like freaked out and, I don't know I thought that I was, was crying yeah yeah 
I like that scene. All of his scenes. And there was like something about him where he just felt so cold and like disassociated. Yeah. And you could tell like he was put through some sort of trauma. Um, yeah. And, and like they, I said, I, without his performance, I don't think the film would have worked at all. No, no. I think it, and like, yeah, his performance also elevates Natalie Portman and um, what's her name? Julian Moore. Yeah, Julian Moore's performance as well. All right. Where well, you um, then? Anyway, I had um, Archie. I don't know how to say his name. I'm definitely butchering Mandu. Mandek- I think Madekwu? I think it's like Archie Med- Medekwi, maybe Medekwi? Med- something like that. I don't know. Which, um, he was he was in, he was the leading Grand Turismo, which he was great in. But he also was in Saltburn, which I really enjoyed as well. His performance. Um, so for me, I just feel like because of those two, I know it's supposed to be a single performance, but I feel like those movies were both um, well. Grand Turismo was a surprise hit. Like I actually. Enjoyed it a lot more than I expected. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you you liked it too, right? Yeah, I really liked it. Um, and uh, and he was good in Saltburn too. I mean, he wasn't like a lead in there, but I think just he had a really good, tw- really big twenty twenty three, and that was kind of my pick. And I haven't really seen him in anything besides. Right, he's not. Which I don't think he's in. No, he's in Midsummer apparently, which I don't really remember. Yeah, but yeah, I, I, saw I think he's gonna he's gonna get big. Yeah, following this year, so I would yeah, it's definitely a breakout performance. Like it's because of these films that he's gonna break out and get bigger, yeah, yeah. you know. So, all right, uh, let's move on to best director. My choice was Christopher Nolan, um, and I think that's a pretty unanimous choice, especially in all the award shows that have been happening so far. Um, Golden Globes, he won. He won for uh, what is it? BAFTA, I think, or maybe, or maybe they just put out the nom. I don't know. But either way, he's a pretty clear favorite, and I think yeah. it's 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 justified. He's never won an Oscar before, although he is. Well, he's never won a Best Directing Oscar before, and it's known like how great of a director he is. So I think that this is just the Oscars' chance. Like, all right, like let's give this one to him because everyone loves Oppenheimer. He's, I'm not just saying, like, oh, they're just giving it to him. Like, he did a great job directing that movie, too. Yeah, yeah. It's not um, like they're just handing him the Oscar. Like, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. It just seems like a very safe pick. And I agree. It's I think, justified. So, I think he is going to win, but it is in my thing. Uh, I actually had a uh, credit girl with for Barbie. Um, I just, in terms of like direct, like a directorial, it was, I don't know. I just feel like. Uh, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, as much as it, you know, it's a, it's an amazing movie. It's also like it's an adaptation of, isn't it? It's from a book, right? Um, what it's Oppenheimer? Based off of, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's based off a book, American Prometheus. It's that, called. Yeah, that was it. That was the same. Like this is like an original, like kind of. I don't know. This is all besides the IP of Barbie, like the entire story and the. Direction of the movie is all original. Like, I don't know. So for me, I just I don't know. That's why. That's mm-hmm. why for, that was my pick. I know it's not like. Uh, uh, yeah, no. I mean, it's. I still think Greta did a great job, and her style is definitely like on the film a lot. You know. Yeah, that, and that's what I mean. More in terms of like her, I feel like her style is more like implemented in this movie than as opposed to Christopher Nolan's style on Island. Yeah, that's if fair. That makes sense. That's fair, yeah. All right. Um, then for best screenplay, I had uh, the Past Lives screenplay from Celine Song. Um, I just think that this film was very well written, and I think that the writing and dialogue was able to shine more because of how like tame and dialogue heavy the story is. It's kind of just like scenes of people conversing with each other. And there are so many specific lines throughout the movie that that I remember sticking with me. One in particular was at the end when um, the three of them are are, are conversing at the bar. And the no, it's the well, it's the opening scene. But then when they revisit it at the end, when oh, when no. when the the her like long lost lover says to her like, "I didn't know it hurt this much." 
to like, like your husband. husband. That's that 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 was such a well written piece of dialogue. Yeah. Like it perfectly encapsulates like that story because there's nothing like he can't hate the husband. There's nothing wrong with the husband, but it's just no, like, yeah. the, the only reason why she chose him was because he wasn't around, you know? Yeah. So it's just like such a heartbreaking story. And I think the way that the dialogue was written and the way that the story unfolded overall just made it so amazing. And yeah. I think in my opinion, it's pretty easily the best screenplay, but I don't know how it'll do with the Oscars. Uh, I agree. I also had this pick as well. And uh, all the ones that we picked, Matt kind of summed up for me. But again, yeah, the dialogue. And one thing I also think that we, people don't talk about the dialogue is the movie's written in two languages. It's, I'd say a third of the dialogue's in Korean, probably, right? Um, yeah, I would say. Maybe even which half, I, honestly. Yeah, which I, I credit to the two. I mean, she wrote it too, I believe, right? Yeah. Um, credit to her because I feel like that makes it even more impressive. Yeah, let me like just double poet. check that. I'm pretty sure she wrote it. I'm like 100%. Well, she might sure. be a co writer. She's definitely let a co writer, but that. she, if not, I'll she say wrote I, it. I, I'll say I'm 99% sure. Let me check right now. So I'm not crediting the wrong person. Yeah, Celine Song, writer. Yeah, I think also how she incorporated the idea of like Inyun, like how yeah, that was written yeah, in. Yeah, I yeah. think that was very well done. Um, yeah, and I feel like this film in particular compared to the others, like it has such a um, reliance on the writing and the writing helps to hold it up. Yeah. Compared to like some of the others from this year. So I yeah. agree. Alright. Uh and then we have our last two categories are both kind of fun. Uh best horror feature was was one of them. And my choice was Infinity Pool, directed by Brandon Cronenberg. Um Yeah, it's my favorite horror movie of the year. I think that it's pretty underrated. Uh I think I might have a soft spot for it because I saw it so early in the year. We we went to go see it in um in the Regal in New York, and Mia Goth and Alexander Skarsgård oh, yeah. were both there for a Q and A. So that was like that was a cool experience to see it in that pack theater. We got like free posters and just like seeing the actors in person, hearing them talk about the film and talk about their characters made me like it a lot more. I definitely want to revisit it soon. I think. Yeah, but. Yeah, this is my favorite horror film of the year. It was like all those Brandon Cronenberg isms of, you know, like the disgusting scenes and like yeah. out there like topics, and paired with those performances by the two leads, Mia Goth and Alexander Skarsgård, who I like both of them a lot. Yeah, so they're great. Yeah, yeah, um, that was my pick. Well, for me, I actually had a uh, Evil Dead Rise, directed by Lee Cronin. I don't. I mean, I am a big Evil. Dead fan, but I, I really it may not be the scariest movie of the year, but I in terms of gore, I enjoyed it and in terms of like just horror in general, I thought it was the most enjoyable of the year um, I love like all the, you know, that was very practical yeah. effects heavy and I mean, I mean, I'm, I know it's not your pick, but I'm sure you you enjoy this movie Yeah um, What's it called? Yeah, I think you're a little bit higher on it than I am yeah, um, yeah. But cool. I still that that probably would be my second choice. Yeah. And uh, I think the opening scene is probably one of the best opening scenes in any movie I've seen in a long time. Yeah, that title card reveal was pretty sick. Yeah. So, and I then like how they the... go back to that opening at the end, it kind of yeah. like goes full circle. So I kind of wonder what they're gonna do next because I don't know if you saw that they uh, what's his name. Uh, not Sam Raimi. Who's the other guy that's always with it? Oh, Bruce Campbell. Mm -hmm. uh, he said they're gonna try to do movies like every like two to every like three to four years instead of every ten. So I'm assuming they're gonna be coming out. But there's gonna be yeah. News we'll probably stuff. hear yeah. We'll probably hear news soon. Yeah. So. All right. Um. Yeah. We can move on to our last category, which was the best superhero feature. Uh, my choice was Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three, directed by James Gunn. Um, this is the perfect uh, capping point of the Guardians trilogy. Uh, it kind of like took a turn at, uh, or took a swing at Rockets 
backstory and like made him kind of the lead of the movie. And I think we just like learned to love these characters at this point after seeing them in the two Guardians movies and the two Avengers movies. Um, it was a very emotional film. It was very funny. And I think it's probably one of the best MCU movies in yeah, general. I, I so it is. Um, but for me, I actually had uh, Spider Man, of course, the Spider Verse, directed by Joaquin Dos Santos, Justin K. Thompson, and Kent Powers. Uh, I mean, it's, I feel like it was either this or Guardians 3 were the only two movies that I really considered to be the best this year. Like, everything else is pretty weak, I feel like. Yeah. It wasn't the greatest year for superhero yeah. movies. But, I mean, uh, not even just in, besides just animation, because the shot of the movie's like just beautifully made. The animation's amazing. But the story's really good. It is, it does feel unfinished because it's kind of like a two-parter but still i think it still hold, hold excuse me it still stands alone pretty well yeah for sure no yeah. that's the one thing that held it back for me and the reason why i like guardians a little bit more was it's because it, like it, it is a part one it doesn't have like a fitting conclusion yeah um where in comparison like guardians 3 is a very conclusive movie it's kind of like yeah yeah like ends off a couple big storylines within the MCU. So, sure. yeah. All right. Now that was a lot of fun. Though I, that's it for our awards. Yeah. But one one uh, uh, category I think that we should have done that maybe we could do no, and maybe we could pick it next week was best animated movie, which we didn't get to do. Yeah, we could do that. There was actually a lot of a lot of pretty good ones this year. Yeah, I mean I think. Uh, we probably both would have said Spider Verse, but at least to get our nominations would have been cool. Yeah. So yeah, maybe we'll do that next year. Um. But yeah, that really wraps up our our winners. I hope you guys aren't disappointed in those. Yeah. But they're pretty good the, picks. Yeah, I think we had some some parody in our answers. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Uh. So yeah, let's talk about... There's a couple of bits of movie news that we could get into. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's anything that big, but one of them that I wanted to talk about was there was some casting rumors for who's going to play Supergirl. Um, do you have the name? There was three actresses. Let me pull up. Yeah, which actually, one of them was one of my picks, which uh, actually made me feel pretty, pretty excited. Yeah, hold on. I'm trying to see if I could pull up the frickin' thing so I don't say any of the wrong names. I don't know why I can't find it now. I definitely liked it on Twitter. Let's see. Oh, uh, What's the girl? So it's the girl from House of the Dragon. Is one of them. Oh, the um, Mill Millie Al Al Alec? Alcluck? I don't know how to say it. That's the yeah, girl from, yeah. from Game of Thrones. Well, it's House of Dragon. Amelia Jones and Meg Donnelly. Those are okay. three girls. Yeah, I really so, hope it goes to Amelia Jones. I think she's the one that... She's in CODA, which won the best picture. It was like the COVID year best picture. Uh, she she was great. She, she, get, she really gave off the Superman. I mean, uh, Supergirl energy yeah. in the movie. Um... And I think she looks the part. The part too. I think honestly, all Millie... three of the actresses look the part. Uh, like I could see all of them as a Supergirl. Yeah, I think the girl Meg Donnelly is probably the front runner because she voices Supergirl. Voice in, uh, so she's already worked with DC before. And it's kind of like, you know, I mean, uh... she's unless like they just don't want to choose the same actress. But I mean, Millie, how do I say Millie? How would I? Alcock. I guess I guess Alcock. I don't really know how else you would say it. Um, but I mean that she's also from Warner Brothers with uh, House of the Dragon. When you get to House of the Dragon, I think you're gonna like her a lot. She's yeah. only in like the first half of the season, but I I really like her. Her the, the younger like this like because it's like a time skip like during half mm -hmm. of the season, and uh, but the younger characters honestly play are better performances than the older ones. Yeah, I think you should watch Coda though, as well. Yeah, 
I think you'd really like it. But apparently, after these casting rumors came out, James Gunn was like, tweet said something about how, uh, like, he's like, oh, it's annoying because you can't disprove things because sometimes some of it is real and some of it isn't. So we'll see. Um, Take that as like they they haven't. They'll probably announce it somewhat soon because I think she's supposed to appear in the Superman movie, which is going to begin filming pretty soon. Like next two months, I think. So. And other news, uh, we also got our first look at the um, the Deadpool three Wolverine suit, like an official merch kind of. Yeah, Um, I mean, we had already seen the suit, but but this is like the first like official like official image kind of. Yeah, and the big thing is his mask. Yeah. Wolverine's mask looks sick. I love how they did the white eyes on it. Yeah, the suit looks, like, sick. It's such a nostalgia bait. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm excited. I yeah, the movie's going to be good, but... They basically went with, like, the classic, traditional, like, let's, you know, let's do it exactly how it looked <laughs> in the animated series and everything. Not the one. I feel, yeah, I agree. I think it's needed for the character. Especially seeing Hugh Jackman finally get able to... You know, yeah, you know what's funny about aware. him is like he's because I just watched The Greatest Showman. Like he's that as like a theater kid, but like he just has to randomly get jacked and play Wolverine every couple of years. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty funny. Like he's in. Like... The... Yeah, well, he's think not... about all the other stuff he's in. He's in this. He's in. I mean, he's in The Greatest Showman. He was in. Uh, what is Prisoners. it? Les Mid. Huh? What is it? Les Wait, Miz. Les Mid. <laughs> yeah. No yeah. but it's another like <laughs> yeah. Broadway musical type of you know. Yeah, and he was just on Broadway recently, like within the past couple of years. Yeah, forgot the name I mean, of the, the show, but yeah. yeah, I'm really excited for Deadpool three. We're apparently going to get a trailer soon, so I won't be here. I'll be in uh, Japan when the trailer comes out. Damn, it's gonna suck. Are you going to be here for the next episode, now that I think about it? What is the next episode? Let me see. Let me check my calendar really quick. February 4th. I work. What? Um, That's Sunday. Oh, wait, no, no. That's Sunday. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, what, when do you leave for Japan? Saturday. I leave, the, I leave like, the 6th at, like, 1 a.m., so technically, like the, like, the 5th at night. Okay. So maybe we'll record on the fifth. Yeah, we could. We'll be probably. I'm off the fifth. Okay, and then the next episode after that will probably be like delayed by a week, because if we miss that episode, then it's gonna be like yeah, I'm gonna four have to catch up a weeks. couple weeks too. Yeah, because I'm I'm gonna miss the the Bob Marley movie. I might be able to see. And then yeah, Madam Web. Madam you'll Web, miss. Which I'm really devastated about that one. Um. What else? Whatever. I mean, we'll figure it out when the time comes. I was just... The Frankenstein movie? Lily Frank, whatever that is. Oh, it actually uh, looks pretty good. Yeah. Um, Lisa Frankenstein. Yeah. But When does that yeah. movie... Um, This is kind of random, right but... The one with Kristen Stewart and the other girl. It's like... Uh, I know it's playing at festivals right now. But, it's, I, but... everything I've seen about it has been like pretty positive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is exciting. Yeah, we'll definitely talk about it when it comes out. But oh, no. yeah, yeah. Uh, let me think if there's any other movie news. Uh, one other small thing was uh, David Gordon Green oh, left yeah. the Exorcist uh, sequel trilogy, which he directed, The Exorcist Believer, uh, this year, which I, I liked. The, the Halloween. Yeah, I liked it. He was signed on to do like a trilogy, and he left after the first film. So, we'll see. We'll see what they do. Um, I, I know you're a big David... Uh, what was his name? David Gordon Green. David Gordon Green. I'm sorry, I was... But I know you're, like, you like... I mean, I, I personally don't like the new Halloween trilogy. I think it's pretty bad. I I didn't mind this Exodus movie, but I could definitely... Wouldn't mind a change in director. In yeah. Opinion. I don't know if he was necessarily the problem. No, Not that first movie. But... No, but maybe you yeah. Get when more talented when that director. news when that news came out, I was kind of thinking like, yeah, they're definitely shelving this. But then you reminded you reminded me that 
They paid they're five hundred million, million yeah, they paid for like million the rights. Dollars for this. They're not showing it, dude. Yeah. So I'm sure we'll hear some news soon because they got to get these movies out. They're, they they got to get a new director. I mean, it shouldn't be that hard to to like sell the movie. I mean, it's a fucking Exorcist movie. Yeah. We'll but, see. We'll see what they do. I mean, this one honestly wasn't even that bad. It got hated on a lot more than I thought it should have. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, I wanted to talk about before we move on to Dune. I want to talk about Echo, which was a Marvel MCU limited series that dropped. They dropped all five episodes at once. And it's based on a character that was introduced in the Hawkeye show, who is a deaf amputee woman character who's like has Native American uh, history, I think. Yeah. Yeah, she has Native American history. Is she? Yeah, she's Native American in the comics too, right? Yeah, yeah, and I actually I like her. I like her. No, character. she's a cool character. Yeah. I like Echo. Yeah, and I think it's really cool that the actress is actually, actually deaf, deaf. Is and she, an is amputee. She, oh, she is, yeah, she is. so I think that's sick. Like, I don't know. for for what it's worth, she's good in the role. Yeah, but this is no exaggeration this is my wor- my least favorite mcu project ever i think this is the worst mcu project that they've ever done any movies or tv show anything um i did not like it at all i know you didn't finish it but I, I honestly i really don't have plans on finishing it as i was watching it i was kind of just like why was this made like why did they make a whole show about echo she does better as a side character. Like, you're supposed so, to make the shows about Daredevil, about Kingpin, and then, like, so, have Echo appear. Not the shows about Echo, and then, like, have the Kingpin appear, you know? I don't know if you want to... Because, like, before this show, she's more of, like, a hand-to-hand combat kind of... Like, I mean, is she? I mean, she's, like, an anti-hero kind of. Mm-hmm. But, um... In the show, I haven't got up to it, but I just know just because the show's been out. But she gets more like what supernatural powers in this. You probably explain it better because you've seen it. Yeah, I still don't really understand how her powers work, but she basically like makes the symbol with her fingers, and then she can go into someone's mind, and it has to do with her, her like tribe's ancestry or something. How does she get it? She always had it. It just kind of like gets on oh it gets like activated Uh which i don't know they're supposed to be doing like oh street level mcu she's like a daredevil character and then it's going into like this native american mythology and it this is the thing that i don't get is like we just had what if which introduced an original native american character um that i really liked makari i think that she was a great character i liked that episode of what if actually i did i did watch that episode of what if and i yeah i thought she was cool yeah, and if you're like, okay, we want to have, like, uh, this is our Native American character. We can really delve into, you know, the history and all this stuff. Focus on Makari. Why are you introducing, and it's literally the next project after What If, and it's another Native American, like... Well, like, I don't think it was planned to release like that. Yeah. You know, like, it, like it's just... And I'm not, I'm not saying, like, oh, strike, I'm not, like... I'm not trying to say, like, oh, they're only allowed to have one Native American. Like, I don't mean it like that. I'm just saying, like, each one kind of takes away from the other the instead other, of yeah. just focusing on one where you can fully do the character yeah. justice. Because they're very gotta, similar characters. Too, For the most part, most of the general public is not going to watch What If. Mm-hmm. Like, Echo has a bigger chance of... And, like, I feel like they haven't even marketed, like that girl that much in like the promotional stuff because i only i've seen her through like clips on on like and from you like i heard about it from you but she's not in, like is she in the trailers maybe she's in like the trailers, uh but... yeah she is she is but i don't know but yeah and they also said oh this is like marvel's the mcu's first uh mature content it's tv ma and it's just like there was just like a couple scenes where they killed people and like had some blood and that's it. There wasn't like any, you know, adult language yeah. or any other really adult topics. Like not how, bro, in Luke Cage, there's like, like the first episode, he's like blowing Jessica Jones back out in a hotel room, you know? Yeah. Like, 
it, that's like mature stuff. Like that's the TV Emma. This was kind of it. Still felt tame. It still yeah. felt very MCU. You know. I mean, we'll see what happens now. Not, like, I'm not. I'm not saying like you know make the superheroes fuck each other, but I'm just. I'm just. No, nah, like, like it's from, more... like that. How drastic of like adult that show is compared to like this, you know. Well, I'm, I'm assuming that Daredevil is going to be uh, TVMA. I hope. Yeah, I think so. And, Especially because, uh, like, you just had Kingpin in the show, yeah. like, beating the shit out of people with blood and stuff. So, And then, and also Punisher's going to be in it and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. It just makes mm-hmm. sense, you know? Yeah. But. Yeah. All right. Um, th- yeah, that was it for movie news. There's not much. There hasn't really been a, a good trailer in, like, we- in months almost, I would say. When's the last time we talked? When's the last time we? The last like good trailer was Kung Fu Panda Four, probably. Yeah. Because I would post them. Nah, I know. I just like. I'm trying to see like if we've missed any trailers. No, not really. No shit, dude. Yeah, nothing. What's it called? What are the what are the rumor trailers coming for the Super Bowl? I know like well I know from doing that focus group that the Despicable Me trailer is gonna release on the Super Bowl. Yeah, and then Deadpool three. Deadpool three. There was another one I saw. I think another Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes trailer. Maybe a Kong trailer too. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, honestly there's like not a lot of this movie's pretty sh- like this year will release is pretty shitty. Yeah. But Whatever, man. Whatever. Like, what? What even is like going to be the best picture? Like, what? What's like the? Favorite uh, I don't right know, now? dude. Honestly, I don't know because if you think about it, like, what I have. I mean, I guess I might have been able to predict poor things. Like you would have said, you would have, but yeah, but like you would have at least had an idea, like right, Oppenheimer. That's probably gonna get. You know yeah. what I mean? Maybe even Dune Part Two might have a shot. Honestly, yeah. but that's like the only one I could think of. Megapolis. Maybe. Yeah, if that releases this year, yeah, yeah. maybe. I'm looking at like this. Yeah, Rebel Moon Part Two. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, let me look. I'm curious. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. There's not. There's not a lot to. Mm. Let me see. Alex Garland's Civil War. Maybe ch- maybe Challengers, the one with Zendaya. You really, that that's like a best picture, really. Maybe the Bike Riders, because that got delayed to this year. Yeah, uh, yeah, Cra- it's it's really weak this year, dude. Craven. Like, I feel like none of these are like Terrifier three. Maybe Gladiator two, low key. Yeah, well, Gladiator won Best Picture, the original. Yeah, it's possible. I don't know if you knew that, but I didn't know. That. What is they follows? It follow? Is it it follows? It's a Sequel, yeah. But also, I don't think that pro- that might be in twenty twenty five. Honestly, honestly, Joker two might have a shot. Yeah, and that's true. Joker two. I don't think Nosferatu. Magazine Dreams is, isn't coming out anymore. Yeah, I'm sure it will at some point, but no, nah, yeah, just maybe like not. I mean, it's not gonna get nominated anymore, probably. Yeah, even if it. Yeah. Um, uh, um, Mickey seventeen maybe? No, that's that just got indefinitely delayed. So um, never been right. <laughs> Anyways, oh. yeah, I want to let's move on to Dune. Yeah, Dune Talk about Dune a little bit. Uh, you recommended it last week. Yeah. So you wanna? Um, I don't know if you could give a synopsis. It's kind of a bit hard to follow, but so I'll, I want to hear what you got to say. It basically follows uh, this. Like, I don't want to say boy, but this character named Paul Atreides, and he's the son of this house, the head of this house, House of, was it, Ara- Ara- Arrakis, yeah. House Arrakis, and they're part of this universe. No, 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 I'm, I'm sorry. House well, Atreides. House of Atreides, Atreides, I'm sorry. This is what, like, it's very, like, I, I, like, I, I know it seems like I didn't watch the movie, but it's just... Matt, back me up. It's very complicated. No, it's confusing. It's definitely confusing. You have to, like, lock in. And there, there is a lot of names. Like, Arrakis is the desert planet. Yeah. Like not, it's, or, no, Arrakis is the planet they go to. Yeah. It is the desert planet, but... 
Yeah, they live it's on this just, planet. Yeah, there, was, there was a lot of times during the movie I had to re- I had to rewind like a couple minutes. All right, yeah, let me let me try to let me try to get my my synopsis. Now, I want I want to see if I can get like I wanna, okay. <laughs> All right, let's start over. So he, there's, there's this guy Paul from House of Trades. He's the the son of the ruler. Uh, the ruler, and it basically it's it's it follows him and he the emperor, which is like the leader of I guess the galaxy, um, says that they need that to go to this desert planet called Arachnus because this group of people are interfering with the the spice harvest. So but to backtrack a little bit, spice is basically this this it's this resource. Thing, it's this resource that they harvest that when it it I don't it lets people fly, right? It's something to do with the ships. Like it allows um... them to fly. That's what they said. It's like it, without it, it's impossible to trap. Yeah, space it's, travel. it's like it's a it's the way it's I like see it. It's a it's a, it's a it's a it's a fuel source for Islands. like the people that are coming in to take it, like the the House of Trades and the Harkonnens, who are like the evil people. Yeah. They're using it as a fuel source and as a way to power their ships and travel through space and whatnot. But the Fremen who live in the desert where the spice naturally is. They're kind of like the local people. They They're use it for more. Fun. Yeah, they use it for like religious, I think like religious, religious hallucinogenic, yeah. hallucinogenic things. Because like all the people, what are they called? The the, the right, fremen. The fremen. The the fremen. fremen. All the fremen have blue eyes because of their exposure to the spice. Like it turns their eyes blue because they. Just, yeah. You know, but anyway, so they go to this planet, and. Uh, when he when they get there, uh, Paul starts having dreams. Well, he may have. Well, he was having dreams before then, technically, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He starts having dreams of like visions of a girl in the desert, and also like he had a vision of like he's just seeing like visions of the future, and like he sees a vision of like one of the guards that's like I don't know if it's a guard, but it's like someone in the army that he knows like dying in battle, and then like he sees. What, what else? He sees in day. I think, yeah, I, think right? you're, I think you're getting a little specific, a little too specific. All right, I got if it. we're just yeah. going for a general plot. So, all right. So they go to the, they go to this planet to help protect. I mean, to help protect the spice route. Well, not route, but whatever. But the harvest of the spice. But then it turns out that it was just a trap, and like yeah, all like the, the other emperor, the emperor, the emperor wants to, yeah, the emperor wants to just fuck them over, and they all just the emperor just basically slaughters. Like the whole house, like his father dies, Paul's assumed dead, and his mother is too. They end up surviving though, and mm-hmm. then at the end they meet up with the, the Fremen, right? The Fremen, the, Fre- the Fremen, and yeah. they meet the Fremen, and then uh, they they basically join them by the end. They basically join them at the end, and then the movie ends off like that. Yeah, yeah. All right that that was a little bit of a convoluted uh, synopsis. Wow. But yeah, I got a little too, too deep into the. Uh, that wasn't too bad. Dreams. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's basically the story of like this son of a a ruler sort of figuring out his place in all this, similar to other sci-fi movies that yeah. have came out. Um, but the difference is, and one thing you didn't mention is that it is believed that he is the chosen one, like the Fremen believe that there is this one person who will come and save them from being like you know enslaved. not enslaved ens- but not like, enslaved but like like forced uh, into hiding basically or occupied yeah um but yeah I love this movie <laughs> I lo- I really did I the director is Denis Villeneuve who is my favorite director um and I love sci-fi and the more that I read about this movie and like Dune in general, the more I was just like enamored by the story. Like the story of Dune is is very insane to me. Yeah, yeah. Just like this, the, the scope book, of it is very like the book was written in 1965, right? So this movie or this story is known to be like the foundations of how we know sci-fi stories today. Yeah. Like for example, the the first Star Wars movie came out in 1977. This book came out in 1965. So we're talking about 12 years before the first Star Wars even came out. This book was written. 
and you see a lot of similarities. You see, yeah. you know, the chosen one, Luke Skywalker. Uh, you oh, see the, em- the emperor. emperor and the villain who is the Baron. It's like he's the low level below the emperor. And it's like yeah. that's Darth Vader. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities in other sci-fi stories that. You know, it's just cool to see, like, oh, wow, this this was the original. There's, yeah. you know, the the voice, similar to the Force in Star Wars. And it's not, it's not like, copying, but it's just inspired by. Yeah, like, there's, like, the the, the voice is kind of like the Jedi mind trick. Yeah. Um, it's a voice carrier. Yeah, I also think it's crazy that this came out in 1965, but it is eerily similar to what is happening with, like, the world powers in the real world, the the world powers in the Middle East, except it's not spice, but it's oil. Where yeah. these big, like the U.S. and Russia and China are taking advantage of this resource that these indigenous people don't really like get to take advantage of. It's yeah. very, it's weird how this the story kind of mimics that so many years ago. Not what what was that like sixty and years ago? Stripping countries' resources for. A long time. Yeah, but I don't think 60 years ago we were, like, going in for oil. Not maybe not oil, but... Yeah. But, yeah, no. I, but, no, it is, a, you know, it is a heaven of its time in terms of mm-hmm. stories weren't, like, no one told stories like that before. Yeah. And I also think that uh, this film uh, like, separates itself from things like Star Wars because I like the like, regal aspect of it, like, the sort of royalty, like, there's houses similar to Game of Thrones, yeah, things like that. Um, I enjoyed that aspect of it a lot. Like, there's none of that in Star Wars. No. And something that I actually really liked about this movie as well is that it takes itself very seriously. There's no, like... Yeah, there's 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 not any jokes, honestly. There's no jokes. There's not a lot of levity at all, really. Um, And Denis Villeneuve actually said that dune is star wars for adults that's what he said so you could like it's not catered towards kids it's not made to sell toys it's it's very serious sci-fi film and it takes itself very serious which i think is pretty refreshing because it's not trying like it's not made to bring in a family audience you know as like star wars may be yeah but that's fair yeah, um, I also like how we're kind of just thrust into the world, and there's all these like world building things where it's just kind of they're kind of like, all right, this is how the world works, and you just you're just supposed to expect it to just like pick it up as an audience, like for like little things, like the people playing the bagpipes when when uh, House Atreides pulls up and meets with the other house. Yeah, like it's just like you know, this is how this is what happens. This is how the world works, and like things like that. I liked how all the ships looked like the design of everything. And I know he doesn't, Villeneuve doesn't really like to use that much CGI. CGI, Yeah. But when he but, does, I mean, I, it reminded me a lot of like Blade Runner, like in terms of like the, the way like the ships flew and like mm-hmm. the not, I know there's not like it built into like big buildings in this, like in Blade Runner, but I thought the ships and the just the overall like the way everything was shot and when they were flying and stuff it reminded me of that. Yeah. Um I really liked how they they uh did exposition in this movie. Like how they would a lot of times it's handled sloppily where they they just kind of explain things just for the sake of explaining them and it's like wow this character like just say this for the audience to know. But, like, for example, when it's teaching stuff about the Fremen and, like, how Spice works, it was, like, Paul Atreides was watching these, like, books, I don't even like, know what they were, like, like, books. It was, like, yeah. Where it's, like, explaining things that the audience has to know. But the way they would do it, it's it seems natural because he himself needed that information. So, it, like, it made yeah. sense as to why they would stop and just explain it, you know? Yeah, I'm, that's true. Yeah. Um, and honestly, it's crazy that I didn't even mention the cast yet. Because of yeah, how the cast is great, is. Yeah. You could go down the line. Like, it's actually crazy good, the cast. Chalamet, 
Um, I like him as Paul. I don't know what you thought. Yeah, I thought he was... He's fine. I actually liked Oscar Isaac the best. Uh, as his father? Yeah. Yeah. I really like Selen Skarsgård as the Baron. I thought he was great. Yeah. Um, my favorite scene, actually, I think, was when Oscar Isaac goes into their place with, like, the false tooth. Oh, and does the the, the poison. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought that scene was very well done. Yeah, it's a really and, good scene. And, uh, like, how it's revealed that the Baron survives by, like, floating to the top of the room. Yeah. Does I also it explain, like, like how he's able to fucking. I don't know. I think there's like a lot of nuances that are in the book that aren't really explained in the movie. But they actually, there was another Dune movie that was directed by David Lynch in 1974. Yeah, I mean, I've seen it. That. It's it's terrible. It's, it's bad. pretty bad. Yeah. yeah, but they, like, you know how this all this stuff happens, and then, like, the film is it's only like half a film, you know. Yeah. Like, the story is not concluded at all. Like, the full story was told in that movie, so it's very rushed, the 1974 uh, one. What is it supposed to be? Like, two? I think this Dune and Dune Part 2, which is coming out this year, is going to be, like, the one book. So it's one book split into two, two parts. Uh, okay. Which I think was a good call. Yeah. To separate it. Um... Yeah, I, f- I feel like I've been dominating this conversation. I mean, I yeah, uh, you, I feel like you, I recommended more of this because one, I wanted to see it before we saw the, you know, because a new one's coming out pretty soon. And two, I know you're such a big fan of the movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I just think it, it, it doesn't really feel complete to me because it is a two, you know, mm-hmm. it's, a, it, it's kind of, a two part, it's a two parter technically, you know, yeah. so. Um, I still, you know, it's shot really well. All the acting is great. The fight scenes are good. Um, did you have a favorite scene, like, in particular? Yeah, I, I mentioned the uh, the scene where uh, Duke Leto Atreides bites down on his tooth, and it releases the poison. Oh, yeah. Maybe also, I think, his assassination, and then after he gets assassinated, when everyone just pulls up. Oh, like, and, like destroys them. Stuff, yeah. yeah. I thought that was well done. I actually really like the scene of um, at the end when he's like fighting that guy, mm-hmm. and like he realizes like he has to kill him. Yeah, it's like his first time killing someone. Yeah, yeah, that was that was a great scene too. I think, and the, the runtime is pretty long. It's like two and a half hours, but yeah. for me, for yeah. me, it kind of flew by. I was invested in all the scenes. Yeah, the second like. half, like in the beginning, I, it was like a little bit. I don't know, because there's just a lot going on. There's a lot to learn. Mm-hmm. So I was a little, like, all right, it's a little boring. But then, like, as, when I got, like, actually understood who the characters were and stuff, I, like, I actually enjoyed it a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what do you think about how the worms look? Because they're, like, a big part of this world. I thought they were cool. And I like how they don't really rely on the worms. Like, a lot of the... Like they're not they're not in it a lot. They're only in it like what, maybe like two or three scenes. Yeah, probably maybe like a minute of screen time. Yeah. Two minutes. I, I like think their the design film. is sick. Yeah. Well, you don't really get to see a full like or like, you know. Yeah, I know in the trailer for part two, he's Paul Atreides is like he's riding, riding one of them. Yeah. So So what is the second one? They're gonna be fighting uh, Well he's the... He's going to join the Fremen, I guess, and try to, like, liberate them from the Emperor and the Harkonnens. And I think uh, a big character that wasn't in this one was the princess, who was the was Emperor's that daughter. Is that played by Florence Pugh? Yeah, yeah. And who's, who is uh, Austin Butler's character? Is He's this character him? named Freed Rautha. He's watching. I, I remember him in Dune 1974. Because I think he's played by Sting, like the guitarist. <laughs> but I forget, like, what his relation is. I'm pretty sure he's related to the Emperor in some way. Who's going to be played by Christopher Walken <laughs> in the sequel. Pretty gr- great casting, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, that's, the that's like, the clip of him. And he says your father was a weak man. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, I guess he's gonna like help to you know liberate them, destroy the the emperor, yeah. or whatever, whatnot. What do you, I've heard like some people online saying that it's kind of like a white savior story because it's like, oh, there's this white guy coming in to f- free all these indigenous people. I don't really agree with that. I mean, they could have, I don't, like, I don't know, they could have cast, like, I don't know. Like, Paul Atreides doesn't have to be a white character. Like, that's not a defining feature. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, and I I also feel that, like, it's, like, if anything, he's kind of realizing, like, the Fremen are right, you know? Yeah. This, this spice is. No, he's rebelling be against, yeah. Yeah, he's rebelling against, you know. This, this, these uh white rulers, if yeah. anything, you know. Like these so I don't. Know. Yeah, I don't disagree. I don't agree with that. That take. I don't. I don't think that's a I popular. I've never take, heard that take but, before. I'm not gonna lie. I've seen it, especially when the movie came out. I remember a lot of people saying that. It's also this was a COVID movie. Also, I don't know if you remember. It, it, went, really? straight, I didn't, it I... went. It went straight to HBO Max when it released. Did it do well? Well, it went to theaters and and Max, and I think it did pretty well. It did well enough for them to greenlight a sequel. Nah, it's kind of weird because like he, Villeneuve like made half a film before, like the second one was even greenlit. <laughs> so he had that much faith in it. Yeah. Did you say he wants to do a third one though? Yeah, because I think there's another book called like Dune Messiah or something. What is so, that about? I I'm not sure. I didn't really look into it, but. And yeah, now that I'm like, I'm trying to get myself to start reading more, maybe I'll pick up doing the book and give it a read. Yeah, you should. See how I like it, but. Yeah, think what did you, what did you uh, rate it? I gave it a four and a half star, nine out of ten. I just, there's so much that I liked about it, like everything from the, you know, the uh, technical aspects, like this, the score, the shot yeah. composition, the cinematography, all the way to, you know, the performances in the story itself. I yeah. just the sci-fi elements of it. No, I mean I can't it, argue. Yeah, it's I don't know. I, I just really liked it. The only thing that's holding it back is the fact that it isn't a complete story. Yeah. And I think maybe once Dune Part Two comes out, and like looking back when we look at like the two as a whole, I might bump it up because I think it is like a perfect sci-fi film. It just like doesn't feel complete you know yeah. so no yeah i i um i ended up giving it a four out of five or an eight out of ten and again it's just because it it, it doesn't feel complete but other than that really enjoyed the movie like great acting great story a little bit confusing in the beginning but once you kind of understand like the whole like premise and you know, like you know the spice and everything like that like the movie gets really good mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I also like how, how, like, invested and passionate everyone seems to be. Like, all of these actors came in and were like, we want to work with this director to make this movie. And he seems very passionate about it as well. Yeah, it's Um, a pretty popular book. I feel like that's... Yeah. You know, Hans Zimmer did the score, which, by the way, I thought the score was Yeah, he does the Pirates of the Caribbean score, too, right? Yeah, he's he's one of the the best working. He actually, he was going to score Tenet. For Christopher Nolan, but he turned that down to do this. So that's oh, like another yeah, thing. Where yeah. It's like just another behind the scene thing where I'm like, damn, like the people really wanted to make this, and I think it yeah. shows. Even in the sequel, all these they got they upgraded the cast even more than it already was. Florence Pugh, yeah, they Austin got Butler, Florence Pugh and Austin Butler, yeah. and Leia Seydoux was in it as well. I think I don't know if you know her, but um, yeah, I just I really like how into it everyone is it doesn't it seems like a very genuine film it doesn't seem like it was made for yeah. any other purpose besides being a good film and telling a good story i agree you know, which is rare these days so yeah and then i guess i could just say my favorite character was was i like paul atreides the best i think his character is explored the most and he seems very complex of a character where he has like the regal side from his mom i mean from his dad who's a, a ruler and then the, the more mystical his side from his mom normal. and him sort of finding his balance. Cause he's going to have to rule, but he's also gonna, 
he's also like learning how to connect with this other side from his mother. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Oh. Yeah, I really what enjoyed did, it. Yeah, I was gonna say, what's your favorite character? Uh, I actually like. I mean, besides Paul, but I actually really liked Oscar Isaac's character, like his dad. Although we mm-hmm. get, you know, a lot of time with him because he he gets paralyzed like halfway through them. Not even, yeah, halfway through the movie, and then, you know. But I actually really enjoyed his character for when he was there. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah, I'm glad you recommended that. I, I was going to at some point if you didn't. So. Yeah. But. All right. Yeah. yeah, I think that pretty much wraps things up. Yeah. I don't know if we got any questions for the Q and A. Did you? Been real. Did it feel like we no, I did. I did. I guess people are running out of questions for us, bro. Yeah. What, I got to post my story again. <laughs> yeah. Um. But, all right, yeah, so, so no Q&A today. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get questions again at some yeah, point. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll yeah. shove it in people's faces yeah. a little bit more. But I guess uh, we'll move on to the movie recommendation from me. Um, I'm going to recommend a movie from 1997, a foreign film. And it is the film Funny Games, directed by Michael Haneke. I think that's how you pronounce his name. Uh. I don't want to really say much about the film. All I'll say is that it has to do with a home invasion. Yeah, I was going to say, I isn't th- it like an Italian home invasion and like it just follows them? I think, yeah. There's like I'm a gonna, twist to it, right? Yeah, I'm just going to say just go in blind. And make sure you watch the 1997 version because there's also an English remake from 2007. It's a bad. Um, I don't know. I think it's pretty good because the same dude directed it. But... Yeah, I'll say just go in blind, but also, uh, but yeah, it's not Italian, it's German, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah, also, it was recently my birthday, and, and a buddy of mine got me the Criterion Blu-ray of this, so I'm excited to revisit it, because it is one that I've rated five stars after I watched it the first time, but I don't really remember it, like, that well, damn, so. That good? Yeah, it was, I remember I was like, damn i was like wow when i walked out so yeah so next episode we'll do funny games let me just look at the release schedule really quick for the next two weekends hold on so next week there's that movie miller's girl (laughs) the one with jenna ortega where she's like with the professor played Uh by martin freeman (laughs) I don't know. If we see that, maybe we'll talk about it. Okay, no, no, yeah. alright. The week after is actually good. Argyle and Imaginary. Alright, Imaginary actually seems pretty. Argyle will do. I feel like I've seen that trailer like 25 times in the theater. It's so obvious that the cat is actually Argyle. Word? You're calling that now? Yeah. Alright, all right, we'll like... do... We'll plan so, for Argyle and funny. Like, games. who else is gonna be like, like talking about Ar- Asian Argyle? Like, like. I feel like uh, it might be, a, it might be like a, a cameo from someone. Like The Rock will just show up and be like, "Yeah, I'm Argyle" or something. He's actually in it, The Rock. No, he's not. Is he? Yeah. He, oh no, no, he's not. He's not. I'm sorry. John Cena's in it. Yeah, John Cena. I'm sorry. But wrong, wrong, uh, wrong wrestler. To wrestler. That. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You want to give your um... yeah my list. Um, okay. So I actually picked uh, top ten like animated movies that we. And this could be like, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, like a pick. Like it could be like anime. Like have we any done form... this list before? I don't think we've done this. I don't think so either. But I feel like it's such an obvious one. Yes, one Let me just. I think we did Pixar. No, we did a. Uh... Let me look. Hold on. Give me a sec. Before we. Top 10. No, we've done like top 10s that had animated movies in them. Yeah, but I don't think we've actually done a top 10 animated movies. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's a, that's a good pick. I'm, I'm hyped for that. So. Yeah. I think I know my number one already. <laughs> Save it. Yeah. All right. Well, 
that about wraps things up. Thanks everyone for listening. Yeah. Thanks for um, tuning in. Please uh give us a follow if you if you liked our podcast. Uh show it to your friends so we can build a bigger fan base here. Put our jobs and just well, do this full time. Yeah. Uh all right, so we will see you guys in two weeks. Go watch Argyle and Funny Games and then come back. Yeah. So peace. Goodbye and good night. <laughs>